Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chayva Narodamam Devim Sarasvatim Vyasam Tatu Jaya Mudirayat For reciting with Shemad Bhagavatam, which is a very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances unto the personality of Godhead Narayan, and to Nara Narayan, which is the supermost human being, and to Mother Sars, which is a goddess of learning, and unto the author, Srila Vyasadev. And we are going to read from the 10th canto. If you remember last weekend, um, we started reading uh, the pastime of Damoda, and um, Dear Govinda Prabhu, uh, uh, read from um, the 10th canto, um, um, chapter 9. And uh, so the pastime of Damodar and that the song we sing during Kartik, there is also the deliverance of the Yamala Arjuna trees. So that's what we are going to read today. And I really like this pastime. And I really like Kirapa from this pastime. So, um, so this month is called Kartik. And in a sense, we can see Kartik as a celebration of pure devotional service. For one month, we focus on understanding what is pure devotional service. Because in order to go somewhere, we need to have information. And we, know, we need to know that's possible and we need to know that it exists. Because without knowing what is pure devotional service, and what, without understanding what is devotional service, we are going to not know where we are going. Anya Bila Sita Sunyam Gyana Karma Anavitam Anukulina Krishna Nu Shilanam Bhakti Utama. So that's the definition according to Shila Rupagoswami, according to you know the teaching he received from Lord Chaitanya about pure devotional service. And pure devotional service is very clear. It's devoid of any um, desire for result, fruitive activities, karma, and is devoid from any any desire for jnana, knowledge, or liberation, or mystic yogi, is devoid of all that. And in, in that song we sing every day, Damodha Rastaka, he said that, I, I, I don't want liberation, moksha, moksha, no, I don't want liberation. I, I don't want anything. I don't even want to know your future at Paramatma which is quite amazing. My only wish is to remember those pastimes again and again and again. So in that song, we, we, we get directly in contact with the mood of the pure devotee, which is a, a, a pure devotee doesn't even require anything spiritual. He doesn't want anything from God. All he wants is to serve, love, and remember God. So the months of Kartik help us to really adjust, adjust our, our compass towards the goal of pure devotional service. And pure devotional service is also favorable towards Krishna. So the pastime of, of that we read last week about Mother Yashoda, it's, it's so full of, of uh, teaching. So Lord Sri Krishna, Janma, Karma, Chame, Dev, Yame, Vamyoviti, Tatvataha. So, if we understand the Lord's appearance and activities, Tyakva, the home from Arjuna, Naiti, so Arjuna. So Tyakva, we will be liberated. We are going to be liberated from anything in this world just by understanding the, the transcendental nature of the Lord's appearance and the Lord's activity. So the Lord come. He said um, that there is two reasons he comes on in the Bhagavad Gita. Mm, what that verse? 
Anyway, could be Janaya. Sadhana, So it, it says there's two reasons I come. I come to please my devotee and alienate the demons. But in reality, to alienate the demons, he doesn't need to come because his material energy does that very well. You know, there is hurricane and earthquake and you know anyway there is death and birth and the system itself is purging purifying so krishna doesn't need to be really involved in that but he does come because he likes to have pastimes of killing the demons to give us trance but altogether even his killing of the demons is for the pleasure of his devotees even the killing of the, of the demons is for the protection of his devotees is not in itself a goal. The, the only uh, intention for Krishna is to help us, to help the conditioned soul to know him and to surrender to him and trust him and, 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 and develop that intimate relationship with him so much so that no matter where we are at, where we are in a, in a, a universe, in this creation, we can be in heaven, we can be in hell, we can be in the middle, on the earthly planet, that we are satisfied. We are satisfied by what? By pure devotional service, by rendering service. The devotees, they pray. And back to you know, Takuo, he, he has beautiful song like that. He's like, it doesn't matter what's happened in my next life, as long as I can be in association with devotees. Please make sure that I'm in association with devotees, and that's all that counts. So a, a, a devotee who are imbued with the love of Krishna, that's what he wants. He wants to be in contact with the devotees and to association with the devotees, um, be in contact with Krishna. So the Lord, he comes to satisfy these devotees and to manifest his pastimes, very intimate pastime, for us to understand the relationship that exists and how his eternal associate and his, his, um, his devotees are allowed to play a very specific role for his enjoyment. And that requires a lot of trust for Krishna to allow himself to be chastised by Mother Yashoda. He requires a lot of trust to allow himself to be naughty without being criticized, like the mind always want to put, you know, people down, like find fault in devotees, find fault in the pure devotees, and find fault in God. And so, yeah, we could find so much fault in Krishna. He breaks a pot of yogurt. That's naughty. That's not appropriate for God to act in this way. And he's, he feed the butters. That's so precious. We don't want to waste any food. And he feed it to the monkeys and he's so wasteful in so many ways and he, he, he doesn't have a sense of value of life and so, so many things we could say about Krishna and he does all that to show us that look look what's available what's available allow yourself to surrender to me allow yourself to be absorbed in that relationship with me and you will get to be in that intimate trusting relationship where you you can play any role you want in my life and that's uh, how krishna manifests himself and his pastime so in in the pastime of mother yashoda mother yashoda she she was taking care of the household duties because there was not there was not enough med servant to do and there is another reason is that she really liked to uh, specifically take care of, of a certain milk that come from a certain cows mm -hmm. to serve Krishna. So, and she liked to uh, serve Krishna directly. The maid servant you can do all the things for the household, but when it comes to specifically making, you know, the yogurt that's going to feed Krishna or boil the milk that's going to go for Krishna, then Mother Yashidas is very eager to do that. And, and so one day Mother Yashidas, she was, she was boiling milk and churning yogurt all at the same time. And Krishna came and he wanted to, uh, he wanted to be fed by Mother Yashoda while she was churning yogurt. And um, 
Mozilla should that she she said, oh yeah, I, I can, you know, churn your growth letter. That, yeah, that can wait. And so uh, she was already serving Krishna by making that special yoga for Krishna. And she decided the priority is to give Krishna milk because Krishna needed milk. And sometimes it's really unclear what's our priority when we serve Krishna. Like, where do we figure that? And that's the time where we want to really pray to the spiritual master because the spiritual master knows the order of our service. And uh, so she fed Krishna and she was giving her milk, her breast milk to Krishna, what a nectar, what, what an intimate service to Krishna to, to, uh, to be put like Mother Yashoda, she so surrendered to Krishna that um, Krishna covered her over and trust her with taking that role as giving, giving him milk from her breast. And then, then she was doing two services, remember? She was churning the butter and she was boiling milk. And while she was giving uh, her breast to Krishna, the milk started to boil over. And at that moment, she knew the priority was to make sure that the milk doesn't get wasted because that's Krishna's milk too. That's Krishna's milk from Krishna's cow. It needs to be taken care of. It's also a direct service to Krishna because that milk is for Krishna's sales. So it's for um, feeding Krishna, making maybe sweets, sweet for Krishna. I don't know what she wants to do with that milk that was boiling, it's unclear. And so Mother Yashoda, she was in this situation that, okay, I'm feeding baby Krishna and the milk is boiling. Well, I already fed Krishna. I know he's not, uh, he's not dying of hunger. I'm going to take care of the milk. But Krishna didn't like that because he wanted to be the center. He wanted to be self first. And that's okay for Krishna to want that because he's a supreme personality of Godhead and he loved to have pastime. So he became angry and, um, and he wanted vengeance. So he broke the pot of yogurt that Mother Yashida was churning and then he went to the rafter of the storeroom where there is more yogurt that was uh, hanging. You now when you hang yogurt, all the, the um, buttermilk fall out of it and then you have, you have like a condensed, like what people call um, Greek yogurt, isn't it? It's like more expensive than normal yogurt, Greek yogurt. So basically that's what they do, they hang the, the, the yogurt in, in, in pots and then the water come out of the yogurt to make Greek yogurt. And then after you can make shrikan and so many preps from that curl, they call it curl too. And, uh, and so Krishna continued, he went to a stick and he broke the, 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 the yogurt that was already made and he served it to the monkeys. And so Mother Yashoda, when she came back from putting down the milk, she found our churning brought and the, the, all the butter, all the, well, all the butter that she was churning there and the yogurt and the butter in the storeroom. And, and she like, no, that's not okay. That's not okay. You, 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 you're not okay here, Krishna, because remember she's covered of her. She doesn't see Krishna as a Supreme Personality of Godhead because what fun will there be for the Supreme Personality of Godhead to have only people around him worshiping him in awe and reverence. There's no fun there. Like we can imagine, I would like give example, like of the big CEO of a big company, let's say, uh, Paul's favorite, Elon Musk, yeah? Let's say Elon Musk, he loved being with his children because they don't see him as a more, the wealthiest person on the in the world. Yesterday I was listening to a, a, a like the second, but but um Bhagavad Gita class from the second chapter and Shia Prabhupada says sometimes we call some you know conditions so Bhagavan because they are very you know because they have a lot of opulence. So we could call you know Elon Musk Bhagavan because he's the wealthiest man on earth. So he's a little Bhagavan. And and what fun is there for him to have you know, to be around his employees. Okay, so they, they make his, his, his business work and all that. 
but they're always like, oh, Mr. Elon Musk, oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And they are really keep toying around because they want to make sure they don't say the wrong thing in case they get fired. Yeah, and it's 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 okay. It's okay, but probably there is no much juice in the relationship versus like with his wife or with his children, or maybe his his, you know, college friends, whatever like that, where he can joke and they they punch him on, on the gut and whatever, they do so many things to him. And then it's so much more relishable. So Krishna is the same. He, he you know, Owen and reverence is not that juicy for him, but for those who, um, who are really desiring pure devotional service and really to let, letting go of any other desire, but to love and serve the Lord, then the Lord gives them a special, special um, illusion. That illusion is to not be able to see him anymore as a Lord and to serve him in an in, in intimate way. So Mosiah Shodar, she was in that. And then she tried to, uh, you know, first she ran after him and he was so scared. She said, she didn't want him to be so scared because she says, you know, if my, if, if my child is scared of me, you know, he's not going to be sheltered by me and I want him to feel sheltered. But at the same time, she wanted to stop the nonsense because she had things to do. So she decided to tie Krishna. And she decided to tie Krishna. So she took a rope and tried to tie Krishna. We know the story. It was always two finger too short, two finger too short. She couldn't tie Krishna at all. And, um, and Prabhupada said, was those two finger out, but I forgot it. One is pride and the other one, I don't remember. Anyway. And those two, it's two fingers too short. And no matter how long the rope was, those two fingers were there. However, however, because Mother Yashoda is a pure devotee, she was able to, to tie the Supreme Personality of Godhead with unlimited. She was able to tie the unlimited because he was, he allowed himself to be tied. And similarly, we cannot capture Krishna it's impossible to capture Krishna with our own mind, our own speculation. The only way to capture Krishna is our pure love. And Mother Yashoda, out of her love, she was transparent. She just wanted to protect Krishna. He allowed himself to be tied. And after he was tied to the mortar, he decided to do something even more naughty. And he, he kind of went and moved towards two trees that he could see the two Arjuna tree. And he, he, uh, he, he ran to the motor there. And that's where we are at with uh, deliverance. And I'm going to read from the Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, we'll start with text one of Canto 10. And I'm going to read the Sanskrit. I'm not going to read all the Sanskrit of all the verses, but some of them. Sri Rajo Uvacha Gatyatam Bhagavan. Etat tayo shapasya karanam, yatad vigaritam karma, yenava de varshestama. King Parikshit inquired from Shukadev Goswami. So we are brought back. It's a 10 canto, so it's really towards the end. There's two more cantos after that. So we are brought back to that conversation. Sometimes we get lost in Bhagavatam and then, oof. There is something very grounding. We come back with Bhagshit Maharaj asking this question. Oh, great and powerful saint. What was the cause of Nara Kuvira's and Mani Gugivar's having been cursed by Narada Muni? What did they do that was so abominable that even Narada, the great sage, became angry at them? Kindly describe this to me. So we, we, we learn how Lord Krishna, when he ran towards the Arjuna trees, they were, it was, you know, it was like a curse and a blessing that those two Arjuna trees were previously the son of the Kuvira, who is um, a uh, uh, treasurer of the demigods. The demigods are all wealthy. And imagine a treasurer is the most wealthy of all the demigods, and they were their son. So what caused them, like Bhakshit Maharaj want to know, you know, their son Kuvira, you know, demigods, uh, Narada Muni is so compassionate, 
he didn't even you know he, di he, he even didn't curse we go he's the hunter he just helped him and became his, his spiritual master what could it be that Narada Muni became so angry that he kills those two son of criminals? That's a good question. Shishuka Uvacha, Udashya Nucharo Budva, Sudripto Danadats Maja, Kala Sopavane Ramye, Mondakinyam Madok, Madot Katao, Varunimadiram Pidva. Madagunita Lokchana, Strijaner Anugayat Bis, Che Cherutu Pushpitevane. Shukadev Goswami said, O King Parikshit, because the two sons of Kuvira had been elevated to the association of Lord Shiva, of which they were very much proud. They were allowed to wander in, the, in a garden attached to Kalash Hill on the bank of the Mandakini River. Taking advantage of this, they used to drink a kind of liquors called Varuni, accompanied by women singing after them. They will wander in that garden of flowers, their eyes always rolling in intoxication. So they were very like sometimes in America they speak about white privilege. So here is privilege. They were the son of Kuveras, and they were privileged by Lord Shiva to have fun in Mount Kalash, which is very rare to enter Mount Kalash. And they also had the privilege to be able to drink Vauni, which is also a privilege. So they were highly privileged. And then they misuse their privilege. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. This verse mentions some of the material advantage afforded to persons associated with or devoted to Lord Shiva. Apart from Lord Shiva, if one is a devotee, of any other demigod, one receives some material advantages. Rich people, therefore, become devotees of demigods. This has been pointed out and criticized by Lord Krishna in Bhagavad Gita 720, Devataha. Those who are not devotees of Krishna who have a taste for women, wine, and so forth. And therefore, they have been described as Gita Gyana, bereft of sense. The Krishna consciousness movement can very easily point out such a foolish person, for they have been an, an, indicated in Bhagavad Gita 7.15, where Lord Krishna said, Namam dus no muda prapadyante narada maha. Those miscreants who are grossly foolish, lowest among mankind, whose knowledge is stolen by illusion and who partake in the atheistic nature of demons, do not surrender unto me. Anyone who is not a devotee of Krishna and does not surrender to Krishna must be considered Naradama, the lowest of men, and do scriti one who, is always, who always commits sinful activities. Thus, there is no difficulty in finding out who is a third class or fourth class man. For one's position can be understood simply by this crucial test. Is he, is he or is he not a devotee of Krishna? Why are devotees of the demigods greater in numbers than the Vaishnav? The answer is given herein. Vaishnava are not interested in such a false class pleasure as wine and women, nor does Krishna allow them such a facilities. On taparivas avishya gangayan, on bojavana bhajini, shikrita tu yuva tibir, gajaj, gajaj, gajav, iva, kare nubi. So there's text for. Within the water of the Mandakini Ganges, 
which were crowded with gardens of lotus flowers, the two sons of Guvira will enjoy young girls, just like two male elephants enjoying in water with female elephant, female elephants. Purple, gener people generally go to the Ganges to be purified of the effects of sinful life. But here is an example of how foolish person enters the Ganges to become involved in sinful life. It is not that everyone becomes purified by entering the Ganges. Everything spiritual and material depend on one's mental condition. So we can base in the Ganges of sinful activities and you know, everything spiritual and material is, you know, it's based on our mental condition on consciousness. I'm not going to read the Sanskrit anymore. Oh, Maharaj Parikshit, by some auspicious opportunities for the two, two boys, the great saint Devarshi Narada once appeared there by chance, by chance. <laughs> Seeing them intoxicated with rolling eyes, he could understand their situation. Oh gosh, what are they doing? Purple, it is said, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shafrikoi. Lava Matra Sadhu Sangha Sarva City Yoy is from the Chaitanya Chaitamrita, Madhya Lila 2254. It's uh, teaching our Lord Chaitanya to Sanatan Goswami. Wherever Narada Muni goes, any moment at which he appears is understood to be extremely auspicious. It is said, Bamande Bramiti Kona Bhagavan Jiva, Guru Krishna Prashadepai Bhaktila Tabich. According to, according to their karma, all living entities are wandering throughout the universe, the entire universe. Some of them are being elevated to the upper planetary systems, and some are going down into the lower planetary system. Out of many millions of wandering living entities, one who is very fortunate gets the opportunity to associate with a bona fide spiritual master by the grace of Krishna. By the mercy of both Krishna and the spiritual master, such a person receives the seed of the creeper of devotional service. It's also from Madhya Lila 19151. Na Narada appeared in the garden to give the two sons of Kurira the seeds of devotional service, even though they were intoxicated. Saintly person know how to bestow mercy upon the fallen soul. Upon seeing Narada, the naked young girls of the demigods were very much ashamed. Afraid of being cursed, they covered their bodies with their garments. So the girls, they really got it. But the two sons of Kuvira did not do so. Instead, not caring about Narada, they remained naked. So they were offensive to say naked like that in front of the great son. Seeing the two sons of the demigods naked and intoxicated by opulence and false scratches, Narada Muni, in order to show them special mercy, desired to give them a special curse. Thus, he spoke as follows. I'm going to read the story and come back to the purport. It's a pretty long chapter. Narada Muni said, among all the attraction of material enjoyment, the attraction of riches, bewilders, one's intelligence, more than having beautiful body, bodily features, taking birth in an aristocratic family and being learned. So riches is more dangerous. Mm -hmm. In fact, in Krishna book, I love in Krishna book, the Prabhupada goes on and on glorifying poverty. And it's so like refreshing because in the West and in America, wealth and making money is so glorified that people kind of friends themselves to the ground. Mm -hmm. Even if they have enough food and they have a good situation, like a roof over their head, enough, they could really spend so much time in devotional service, they did more and more and more. And that greed is pushing because, because that believes that this is the most intoxicating things to have is wealth. So 
they will their one sent intelligent and having beautiful body fixtures to give birth in the aristocratic family of all and being learned. When one is uneducated but falsely buffed up by wealth, the result is that one engages his wealth in enjoying wines, women, and gambling. There is a really nice purple we are keep. Unable to control their senses, rascals were falsely proud of their riches or their births in aristocratic families are so cruel that to maintain their perishable bodies, they, which they think will never grow old or die, they, will, they kill poor animals without mercy. Sometimes they kill animals merely to enjoy an excursion. We have seen that people go into Africa and you know, it used to be that they do a safari and they kill lions and they even kill uh, elephants and they just like, leave them there, just pleasure. While even one may be proud of one's body, thinking oneself a very big man, minister, president, or even demigod, but whatever may be after death, this body will turn either into worms, into stool, or into ashes. If one kills poor animal to satisfy the temporary, temporary whims of his, of his body, one does not know that he will suffer in the next birth for such a sinful miscreant must go to hell and suffer the result of his action. Well, I should have got some speaking. While alive, does this body belong to its employers, to the self, to the father, to the mother, or the mother's father? Does it belong to the person who take it away by force, or to the slave master who push up, purchases it, or to the sons who burn it in the fire? Or if the body is not burned, does it belong to, to the dogs who eat it? Amongst many possible claimants, who is the rightful claimant? Not to ascertain this, but instead to maintain the body by sinful activity is not good for the body would belong to. That's a good like, question. This body, after all, is produced by the unmanifested nature and again annihilated and merged into the natural elements. Therefore, it is the common property of everyone. Under the circumstances, who but the rascal claim this property as his own while maintaining it commits such sinful activities as killing animals just to satisfy these whims. Unless one is a rascal, one cannot commit such a sinful activity. Atheistic fool and rascal were very much proud of wealth, fail to see things as they are, therefore returning them to poverty is a proper ointment for their eyes so they may see things as they are. So if someone has wealth and doesn't use it for devotional service and use it for sinful activity or gratification of some way or another, then that wealth is taken away and in their next birth, they will be born in a poor situation. At least a po poverty-stricken man can realize how painful poverty is, and therefore he will not want others to be in a painful condition like his own. So to be poor, help us having more compassion. By I'm just good. It's like a, a, a classic empathy purport from Sheila Kalpad in that section, section of the Bhagavad Gita. Mm -hmm. So it's, much. It's, 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 it's very empathy oriented. It's so oriented like, if, so if, if we are pricked by pain, then we don't prick. And so if if we understand, you know, like the suf suffering, yeah. then we don't want to inflict on others. And that means animals too, uh, suffering. Yeah, so, so much. I'm reminded of uh, Bhagavad Gita chapter 6, text 32. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna describes that uh, Atma Pami in the Sarvatra, Samam Pashati Sarjuna, Krishna describes that um, a true yogi, a true devotee, understands, is empathic with the happiness and distress, the emotions of others by dint of his own experience. And so uh, I guess we have that here. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, we have that here. Sam, I'm probably maybe 
Shia Prabhupada used that, that verse in one of the purposes. By seeing their faces, one whose body has been pricked by pins can understand the pain of others who are pin pricked. Realizing this, that this, that this pain is the same for everyone, he does not want others to suffer in, that, in this way. But one who has never been pricked by pins cannot understand this pain. So again, the, the theme of empathy, when we have been, been by pain. A, pro a poverty stricken man must automatically undergo austerities and penances because he does not have the wealth to possess anything. Thus, his false prestige is vanquished. Always in need of food, shelter, and clothing, he must be satisfied with what is obtained by the mercy of Providence. Undergoing such a compulsory austerities is good for him because. This purifies him and completely frees him from false ego. So, desiring poverty. That's a change of perspective. Always hungry, longing for sufficient food, the poverty stricken man gradually becomes weaker and weaker, having no extra potency. His senses are automatically pacified. A poverty stricken man, therefore, is unable to perform harmful, obvious activities. In other words, such a man automatically gains the result of the austerities and penances adopted voluntarily by saintly persons. Saintly persons may freely associate with these, those who are poverty-stricken, but not with those who are rich. A poverty-stricken man, by association with saintly person, very much becomes un uninterested in material desires, and the dirty things within the core of his heart are cleansed away. What a glorification! No? We could see that once we went on 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 downtown with just Gauda and I. We were downtown doing book distribution, and we we stop at some homeless. We gave them prashadam, and then we started to show them the books, and they were so open to receive the book. Mm -hmm so open to receive the philosophy, so open to understand that they are suffering versus in, like I went once to do to do a book distribution in size hotels, there is an island, I don't remember the name, but then it's people are really like yoga and they have big cars, they have a lot, a lot of comfort, a lot of money. And they were, you know, in that illusion of satisfaction and they were not open to receive or to hear from Srila Prabhupada. Saintly person sadhus think of Krishna 24 hours a day. They have no other interest. Why should people neglect the association of such exalted spiritual personalities and try to associate with materialists, taking shelter of non devotees, most of whom are proud and rich? Therefore, since those two persons drunk with a liquor named Vauni or Madvi, and unable to control their senses, have been blinded by the pride of celestial opulence and have become attached to women, I shall relieve them of their false prestige. So that's Narada Muni speaking. Those two young men, Nala Kuvera and Mani Griva, are, are by fortune the son of the great demigod Kuvera. But because of false prestige and madness after drinking liquor, they are so fallen that they are naked, but, but cannot understand that they are. They are naked and they cannot. Therefore, because they are little like trees, for trees are naked, but are not conscious. These two young men should receive the bodies of trees. This will be proper punishment. Nonetheless, after they come, after they become trees and until they are released, by my mercy, they will have remembrance of their past sinful activities. So they become trees, more trees are ignorant, they don't know they are trees, they are just purging their sinful activities from the time they were in a human form. But those demigods, because they are advanced, they are devotees of the Lord, the son of Kuviras, they got, they got the blessing of remembering um, their past sinful activity. Moreover, by my special favor, after the expiry of 100 years, by the measurement of the demigods, 
which is really long. They will be able to see the supreme personality of God advance to their face to face and thus revive their real position as devotees. So Kalev Goswami continued, having then spoken, the great Saint Narada and Devarshi Narada returned to his ashram, known as Narayan Ashram, and Nalakuvera and Manivika became twin Arjuna trees. Okay. And uh, I see our time is passing, so I'm going to stop here because it seems like a nice transition. And uh, I just want to read the purpose from the a verse of, about the sadhus. Purpose by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. A sadhu is one who is engaged in devotional service to the Lord with, without deviation. Bajatima Mananya Bhak. Titikshava Kaunika. Sudhuda Savade Hinam, Ajata Satrava Sankta, Sadava Sadhu Bhushana. The symptoms of a sadhu are that he is tolerant, merciful, and friendly to all living entities. He has no enemies. He is peaceful, he abides by the scriptures, and all his characteristics are sublime. Bhagavad Gita 3 25 21. A sadhu is Surida Sarvadehi Nam, the friend of everyone. Why then should the rich, instead of associating with sadhu, waste their valuable time in association with other rich men who are averse to spiritual life? Both the poor man and the rich man can take advantage of the Krishna consciousness movement. And here is, it is advertised that everyone do so. There is no profit in avoiding the association of the members of the Krishna consciousness movement. Narodam Das Thakur has said, Sat Shangacha Dikainu Asate Vilasa Tekarane Lagilaye Karma Banda Fansa. If we give up the association of sadhus, saintly person engaged in Krishna consciousness, and associate with persons seeking sense gratification and accumulating wealth for this purpose, our life is spoiled. The word asat refers to, to a, a Vaishnav, one who is not a devotee of Krishna, and sat refers to a Vaishnav, Krishna's devotee. One should always seek the association of Vaishnav and not spoil one's life by mixing with a Vaishnav. In Bhagavad Gita 7.15, we, the distinction between Vaishnava and Vaishnava is unshaken. Namam de Krishna Muda Papadianti Naradama Mayaya Paritigana Ashuram Babam Ashitam. Anyone who is not surrendered to Krishna is a most sinful person, Duskriti or Rascal Muda, and the lowest of men, Naradama. Therefore, one should not avoid the association of Vaishnava which is now available all over the world in the form of the Krishna consciousness movement. And that's very, very significant that Shia Prabhupada said the association of the Vaishnav, which means association with him is available in his movement. Well, we, we want to remember that, that as part of Shia Prabhupada's movement, we represent Shia Prabhupada and we want to give our association to the rest of the world and I know that when we associate, as long as we are following Shia Prabhupada's program, as long as we are following Shia Prabhupada's instruction, or endeavoring to follow Prabhupada's instruction, then we represent him. And, and then we give the opportunity for the entire world to meet a pure devotee, to meet the Vaishnav, to meet the a sadhu who has the potential to deliver them from the cycle of birth and death and will give us the holy name of the Lord to, deli to make it easy. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram. Jai, Jai, Nara Muni Ki, Jai, Shukadev Goswami Ki, Jai, Shura Prabhupada Ki, Jai. Thank you for being here today. And of course, uh, you know, we know the rest of the pastime, like the two Arjuna Trua being, you know, um, pulled by baby Krishna, toddler Krishna. And, uh, and then when they fall, because they have remembered for 100 years of the demigods, which is trillions of years, 
probably of our Earth, earthly planet. Tens of thousands. Tens of thousands, yeah. And uh, and all that time, they, they had time to meditate on their sinful activities. You know, it's a blessing, but it's also a probably occurs. And because we, when we remember, like, oh, I'm here. It's it's an ambitious too. Like, I'm here because what I did. It's painful. Hi, Krishna. Any comment, question about um, the reading, pastimes, pure devotional service, the mercy of the devotees, the life of um, Narakvira Manigriva, baby Krishna? Any uh, comment, question about what we uh, um, discussed today? The glorification of poverty. Anandini, you have your hand raised. I think Rukmini was first. Uh, I don't see uh, Rukmini's hand up. But Rumi, Rukmini. Did. Oh, no, it's sorry. It was, it's all scribbled on my screen. It's me. <laughs> okay. Hari Bol. Hi, Krishna. Thank you for choosing to read this pastime and I, I very much liked your introduction and uh, I, I just wanted to share that I am noticing these effects of Kartik and I, we, we organized here in, in our area, like uh, we, we asked everyone we knew, like, would you like to host a Kirtan evening? Mm. And we got together like a, a tour with 16 places where we can go during Kartik. 16 places? And it's 16 places yes it's almost every other day we can go somewhere for kirtan and so it's so you know like so sometimes we drive an hour or even more to go to a place to someone's home and we sing kirtan and it takes a lot of commitment to do that because i have so many other things i could do which are also good things and important things mm -hmm. <laughs> but i made this commitment to go to as many of these evenings as i can and I just noticed the effect on my consciousness in so many ways, like it's easier to get up in the morning, it's easier to chant. And also my, my, the impressions in my mind are changing. Like now, I, I used to visit people and I would visit their homes and I have memories of their homes and they were empty somehow, like there was no, no altar or no God consciousness. And, and now I have all these impressions of these homes here in our area where they have an altar and they worship God or Krishna or Lord Jesus, or they just, they, they sing the names of God. And it's so beautiful to have that in my, in, in my mind, in my memory. Mm, your consciousness, yeah. Yeah, and you can see the effect of Kartik that, you know, like, they're like going towards pure devotional service. So you're doing sacrifice, austerity to, uh, to, uh, to go to those kirtan. And you need to sacrifice. You have other things you could do, and they are all good things, but you're choosing, okay, this is what I'm going to do for Krishna, for Lord Chaitanya's movement. I'm going to participate in as many kirtan as I can, even if it's mean like driving one hour there and back and more than an hour. And you see, you know, you see your consciousness becoming like Vaikuntha consciousness. You're in the same body, the same situation, the same family. However, your consciousness is like you're, you're, you're detaching from, from the material conditioning and you can experience that. Yes, a little bit. <laughs> yes, 16 is really amazing. Very, very inspiring. Yeah. Very inspiring and, and also like, you know, like, yeah, house of people. Yeah, it's so difficult to relate to a house that doesn't have an altar. Mm -hmm. And when I enter someone's house, I'm like, okay, where do I go to give the flower? And where do I go to go down? <laughs> and if there is no altar, I just like, it's, it's, it's empty, like you said, it feels way really empty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it, they are, it, it lacking God consciousness, like liking the spiritual world, really. Our altar, our Chintamani uh, 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 Dam, they are uh, transcendental touchstone. And even so, we may not see them like that. They are. They are the spiritual world in our house and help us to uh, remember Krishna. 
Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Any uh, other comment, question? If not, we can go back to some purports for read a little bit of the purport we skipped. So they are all very beautiful, potent purport from Sheila Berry. Um, Um, the purport to uh, Narada Muni becoming angry, Shia Prabhupada said, also in the beginning, Narada Muni appeared very angry and cursed them. At the end, the two demigods, Nala Kuvira and Mani Guiva, were able to see the Supreme Personality of God at Krishna face to face. Thus, the curse was ultimately auspicious and brilliant. One has to judge what kind of curse Narada placed upon them. Shila Vishwatna Chakravati Takur give hearing a good example. When a father finds his child deeply asleep, the child has to take some medicine to cure some disease, the father pinches the child so that the child will get up and take the medicine in a very similar way in Arada Munikars, Nala Kuvira, and Manigriva in order to cure their disease of material blindness. And that's, you know, like Queen Kunti is an example of that. She really understand that the bitter medicine is so like such a boon and opportunity because when that bitter medicine comes, she said, when, when those calamity comes, that we can remember you, Krishna. So that's the mood of, of the curse of Narada. In a sense, we can look at all the calamity in our lives as blessing and supporting us to remember Krishna, to remember to be with Krishna, and, and by remembering Krishna, then our life is perfect. So things that may look like are not aligned with what we wish will happen, not fitting in our expectation of what life should be about, um, are the curse of Nada allowing us to see Krishna, allowing us to uh, surrender more deeply, allowing us to come closer to Krishna. And then the next purpose is also um, um, about the material attraction. Among the three modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance, people are certainly conducted by the lower qualities, namely passion and ignorance, and especially by passion <laughs> in, in Earth, Earth planets for the human being is mainly passion. Conducted by the mode of passion, one becomes more and more involved in material existence. Therefore, human life is meant for subduing the mode of passion and ignorance and advancing in more goodness. That's from the Bhagavad Sam, chapter, uh, Canto 1, chapter 2, and text 19. This is culture. One must subdue the mode of passion and ignorance. In the mode of passion, when one is falsely proud of wealth, one engages his wealth only for three things, namely wine, woman, and gambling. When we can actually see, especially in this age, that those who have unnecessary riches simply try to enjoy these three things in Western civilization, these three things are very prominent because of an unnecessary increase of wealth. Nada Muni considered all of these in the case of Manigriva and Nala Kuvira because he found in them such a pride and wealth of their father's Kuvira. And yeah, if, um, you know, often people feel so stressed and pressure and too much to do. And, and if they will take time to sit and say, okay, what do I need to just maintain my body and soul together? What do I need to just self-preservation? Tamasya nidriya priti, doba jiveta yavata, jivasya tattva vigyasa, nataya shchya karmavi. Like life desire should never be directly towards self-gratification. One should desire only a healthy life or self-preservation. So desire that, that's natural because the body is also a, a property of Krishna. And so to desire self-preservation, that's natural. And nothing else should be the goal of one's life, it's service. 
And because life is made to inquire about the uh, inquiry of, uh, about the absolute truth. So let's like if each person in the world could stop and say, okay, do I have enough? Yeah, I have enough. Let, let me stop any endeavor for self-preservation and put all my endeavor towards um, self-realization. And that doesn't mean there will be no activities. And it doesn't even mean that there will be no abundance. There is that verse that says, um, Dharma swa nustita pusha. No, Dharma, Dharma sya, Dharma sya, Dharma sya. Anyway, the verse said that. Now to carry out the Gadvati. So that verse said that like all, all um, occupational activities, I love this verse, all occupational activities are ultimately made for self-realization. They are not to be performed for material gain. So that's clear. All occupational activities are made for ultimate self-realization. So whatever we do, we can focus there that, okay, I'm doing that to my self-realization, I'm doing austerity. And they should not be performed for material gain. And after that, he said, furthermore, if one is engaged in, in, in devotional service to the Lord, if one, when one is engaged to devotional service, like, like, and receive material gain, so material gain will come. If we are supposed to use material gain for devotional service, it's going to come our way. And so one who is received should never use material gain for cultivating sense gratification. So, yeah. so we have self-preservation and for most of the Western country, like it's lost. You know, now it's about what cell phone I will get or what most, you know, TV and so many unnecessary necessities that people work very hard to gain. And the sense of such like self-preservation is not even in the brain of most human beings. Besides, you know, people who are very poor, like in places like Africa, India, and even in America in some ways. And um, and uh, and so so much waste of energy and time for only sense gratification and missing out on the purpose of human life and the purpose of uh, all occupational activities. So that's um, purport. Um, one more, so because we missed so many of them. When the mode of passion and ignorance increase in human society, giving rise to a necessary economic development, the result is that people become involved with wine, women, and gambling. Prabhupada really, yeah, he, he really pushed their wine, women, and gambling, wine, women, and gambling. But you know, summarize it all. I have been exposed to uh, people in the world lately more, you know, on doing sankirtan and preaching, and people, you know, like being in contact with people who are not devotees necessarily or not even aspiring to be devotees. And that, yeah, yeah, that's why women and, and gambling, you know, how to make money with with no money or how to gamble in some ways, like. Gambling means like I, I I deserve to receive a lot without doing much, and uh, and uh, and like that I speculate on something. I, I'm trying to make money, make money, make money, and then and then and then yeah. The, the someone was sharing with me recently, like um, the father of that person is uh, drinking a lot, and. And the father couldn't understand why will but why will you stop drinking? Why will you stop going to bars and having fun getting drunk? And and the person was saying, why will you continue to do that? This it's it does sound very miserable. Anyway, um, where am I? Yeah. Forgetting that, however, one may try to maintain the body, the body is subject to birth, death, old age, and disease. So why putting so much energy when, you know, we just need to maintain it. Such a full restructure of engaging physical activity one after another, being those critique. They completely forget the existence of the Supreme Controller. 
We're sitting within the core of everyone's house. Ishwara, Sarva, Bhutana, Murid, Deshir, Una, Tishtati. That supreme controller in observing every bit of one's activities. Is that beautiful? We cannot hide from Krishna. And he rewards or punishes everyone by giving one's a suitable body made by material nature. Ramayam Sarvabhutani Yantra Udani Mayaya. In this way, sinful person automatically receive punishment in different types of bodies. The root cause of this punishment is that when one unnecessarily accumulates wealth, one's become more and more degraded, not knowing that his wealth will be finished with his next birth. Nasadu maniyata atmanoyam asamapi krishada ashadeha. That's from the Bhagavad Sam 554. Animal killing is prohibited. Every living being, of course, has to eat something, jivo, jivasya, jivanam. But one should be thought what kind of food one should take. Therefore, the Ishupanishad instructs, one should eat whatever is allowed for human being. Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita 926, if one, if one offers me with love and devotion a leaf of flower, fruit and water, I will accept it. A devotee therefore does not eat anything that will be that will require slaughterhouse of poor animals. Rather, devotee take prasad of Krishna. Krishna recommends that one giving patram pushpam palam toyam, a leaf of flower or food or water. Animal food is never recommended for human being. Instead, a human being is recommended to take prashad, remnant of food left by Krishna. Yagya shis shis dasina santo muchante sarva kilbishe. Bhagavad Gita 3.13. If one practices eating prashad, even if there is some little sinful activity, involved, one become free from the result of sinful acts. So we are going to, to uh, perform sinful activity. We cannot get, we cannot be alive in this world, uh, embodied in this world without performing sinful activity. However, when we offer all our activities to Krishna, we don't get the sinful reaction from the activities. Hi Krishna, any more comment, questions, sharing? Thank you for being um, with us today. Thank you for listening to the pastime of Nala Kubera and Mani River and how they understood they were fortunate to be cursed by Narada. And in a sense, we are all cursed by Naradas and Narada is all merciful and compassionate and all he wants is to us to see Krishna face to face. All glories to Shila Prabhupada, Gantara, Srimad Bhagavatam, Ki Jai, Shila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Hi, guys. Hi, Krishna. Jai.